FC. Today I am super excited to be filming my entire manga collection video. It has been almost a year and a half since I have done a video of my collection. Um, the very first time I ever did it was actually the very first video that I've ever made and I even had gaps back then of books that I'd had lent out to friends so I haven't even shown you everything that I own. Um, so I'm super stoked. I have all of my books back from my friends. So this is going to be every single manga book I own in my entire collection. And I'm just really excited to show it off. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so I have two big shelves in my collection and then one smaller shelf. So I'll just go um, shelf by shelf and show you everything that I have. So here's an overview of the first shelf and you can see up on top there, I've actually rearranged my manga since the last time I did this as well. So now they are alphabetical um, by author name and uh, when there's more than one I went with a uh, story first. So the first series I have is 1 to 18 of Noragami, which is a really awesome manga, just unfortunately it's on hiatus now. I think the <laughs> predicted release date for volume 19 is like 2020, which really sucks. Um, so yeah, if you're looking to start this series, I would caution you that you might not get the end, and right now it ends on a really long cliffhanger, and you're gonna be stuck with that for several years. Um, so next up is Negima, volumes 1 to 9 um, in omnibus format, which covers volumes 1 to 27, and then I have 28 to 38 down here, which is the complete series. I really love Negima, especially the second half of the series, um, which is kind of unusual for me because it is a harem series to actually like it, but um, it is actually quite good, so if that's something that was turning you off from reading it, then uh, I would say still give it a chance. And then I have volume 6 to 15 of Mar. I actually haven't read this series yet. I got these volumes for free from a friend, and I've been waiting. She, uh, she didn't have 1 to 5 at the time. She said she'd lent them out to someone and never got them back. Um, so I'm either going to buy them myself, which is kind of difficult because they are out of print right now, or read them online, or wait and see if she ever gets them back, but I just haven't figured out what I'm doing with those yet. So I have it in my collection, I just haven't gotten around to reading it. Um, if you see there, the little post-it notes that I have in books count as my bookmarks for things I haven't read. Then I have the full series of Full Metal Alchemist, volumes 1 to 27 in omnibus format. This is an amazing series. Um, yeah, if you don't know what Full Metal Alchemist is, you should, you should figure it out because it's great. Um, the only thing I would caution against is don't get it in omnibus format. The paper quality is terrible. It's pretty much tissue paper. So I would highly recommend getting the box set if you're looking to get this. And then the next thing I have is the Heroic Legend of Arslan, volumes 1 to 7, which um, I think volume 8 just came out, so I'm not quite up to date, but I'm pretty close. This is a really good series. It's actually by the same uh, mangaka as the person who did Full Metal Alchemist. So if you can tell there, the main character looks pretty similar to uh, Ed from FMA. Um, but the story is actually written by someone else, so that's kind of interesting, but it's still a really good read. I really like that series. And then on the next shelf, we have my only Inio Asano work, um, A Girl on the Shore. Uh, I feel like this was probably not the best one for me to start with, to get an idea of Asano's works. It wasn't my favorite. Um, I think eventually I will do Solonin. Um, and see how that goes and how much I like that um, but I really I wouldn't really recommend this to anyone else um, I did love the cover that's what made me purchase it um, and the back of it says that it's like this cute high school romance basically but um, it's, it's not <laughs> not so cute so yeah 
I would I would try something else. Not that I've read any Inyo Asano books to recommend to anyone, but I wouldn't recommend that one. <laughs> Um, and then next up is Yotsuba. I have volumes 1 to 5 in the old school um, editions and then 6 to 13 in the newer version. Um, this is an amazing series. I am up to date. So far they don't have any content for um, a 14th volume. So yeah, hopefully that comes out sometime in the future, but Yotsuba is an amazing, adorable series. Then next I have Hormia volumes 1 to 8. I am a couple volumes behind with this. Um, it is a really good series. It's a cute high school romance without any of the crazy drama that you usually see in high school romance series, um, which is something that I really enjoy about it. So yeah, that's a really cute one. Uh, then I have Dot Hack, The Legend of Twilight, the complete series. Uh, it's only three books long. Unfortunately, it's Tokyo Pop, so it's out of print, but I think there is now a new omnibus format. Um, it's a pretty good story. I enjoyed it. So, if you like uh, video games turned into manga, you'd probably like that one. Uh, the next up is Princess Jellyfish, volumes 1 to 7. I think I'm up to date, or volume 8 might have just come out. Um, so pretty darn close. This is an amazing series. Um, it's about a group of nerds that meet this beautiful girl and just craziness ensues and it's awesome. Then I have some Zelda manga. I have The Legend of Twilight volumes 1 and 2 and then um, Majora's Mask volume 1 which is just a single volume. I've read those three. I wasn't super crazy about them. I bought them mostly because I just love the Zelda games and wanted everything Zelda I could possibly find. Um, I wasn't really planning on buying any more of the Zelda manga because I didn't enjoy those first three, but I've been told that the Twilight Princess series is actually going a lot more in-depth into the storyline. So I figured I would give that a chance and then my mom actually bought me volume 2 here. So pretty excited to get into that. I still need to buy volume 1 to start reading so you can see my little bookmark there. But I will be buying that shortly. Then on the next shelf down, this is a sneak peek into my April pickups. I have My Hero Academia volume 1 and then 5 to 11. So I am missing volumes 2, 3, and 4. My mom actually bought me volume 1 along with the Zelda manga, so that was super awesome of her. And then they had a Viz sale on it chapters, and I have been caught up to the anime, so I wanted to kind of get ahead of where the anime was, so I bought um, what was the most recent volume and then kind of went backwards at the time. So volume 12 has just come out and I will probably be buying uh, 12 and the other three volumes that I need sometime soon. This is an amazing series. If you haven't read or watched it, you should really do so. I would highly recommend it. Uh, the next up is Land of the Lustrous, volumes 1, 2, and 3. I am not up to date with this. There's still two more in the series, I believe. Um, it is a really good series. As I've said in my pickups, um, I'm not a huge fan of the art style in cover, in color, sorry. It looks really pretty, like these covers here, but um, when you actually get into the books, it's kind of simple and I'm not a huge fan of it. All of the characters look very similar, um, so it's kind of hard to distinguish them. Uh, but I do like the story, so I will continue to read this, but uh, it's not my favorite series. Uh, the next up is Bamboo, blah, Bamboo Blade, volumes 1 to 7. Um, I've only partly read this. It's not a super amazing story, but I got it for free from my friend, so can't really complain about that. Then next is Vagabond Volumes 1 to 3 in Bizbig format. So I think there's three volumes each, so it's really like 1 to 9 in the single editions. I absolutely love this spine with like the continuing image. I think that's super cool. Um, the art itself is amazing because it's Takahiko in a way. So yeah, 
awesome. I hope to continue to collect those. Then next I have Attack on Titans, volumes 1 to 19, and 20 to 23. This is an amazing series. I love it. Again, it's a super popular one, so if you haven't heard of it, um, you really should get on that. And then I have the two spin-off series, um, No Regrets, which is Levi's story, uh, which is two volumes, and then Lost Girls, which is another two volumes, um, which has uh, Mikasa and, uh, oh, what's her name? It's been a while. Annie, Annie's backstories. And then I have Tokyo Ghoul, volumes 1 to 14, and the sequel, Tokyo Ghoul Re, uh, volumes 1 to 3. So Tokyo Ghoul is a complete series, and I believe I'm up to date with Tokyo Ghoul Re. There should be another one coming out in a couple weeks. This is another amazing series that I don't think I really need to say much about. Um, if you don't know what it is, you should find out. And then I have Flying Witch Volumes 1 to 4. It's a cute, kind of laid back uh, manga about um, a girl that moves out to the country to study being a witch. Um, it doesn't really have an overarching storyline, but it's still a pretty enjoyable read. So if you're looking for something uh, light and happy, that would probably be one I would recommend. Then I have A Certain Scientific Railgun Volumes 1 to 3. This is an okay series. It's one I'm debating if I should continue or not, um, but for now I'm still keeping it in my collection. And then I have My Love Story, volumes 1 to 12, and the final volume, volume 13. Um, so that's a complete series. This is an adorable, feel-good romance story that if you like shoujo manga, I would highly recommend. It's awesome. And then I have Naruto volumes 1 all the way to 43 and if you see here I have a couple little booklets at the start that came with my box sets. So oh, I'm gonna stand up. That is everything I have on shelf number one. So let's go over to shelf number two. Okay, so here is shelf number two. It's just a quick overview. And then we'll go into everything book by book. So I have the rest of Naruto, volumes 44 to 72 up here. Naruto is one of my, probably my favorite of the big three. I don't know if that's really fair to say, considering that I haven't really read um, much of Bleach or One Piece. I've given them a try and they just didn't hook me the way that Naruto did. So this is the one I decided to collect. I don't know if I'll ever get into Bleach, um, but One Piece is just a ginormous series and I just don't know if its story really appeals to me that much. Please don't hate me, but I just think that Naruto is probably my favorite of them. Uh, and then next I have some series uh, from my one of my favorite mangaka. I just love her art style and I think that her stories are very cute and sweet. So I have Kamichema Karen volumes 1 to 7 and then Pitta 10 volumes 1 to 8. These are both my two of my favorite series. I love them a lot. Uh, and then I have Dead Man Wonderland volumes 1 and 2 and 3 to 13 to finish off the series. This is another really awesome series that I would recommend if you like um, horror manga or action, this is really really good and it has a phenomenal ending. And also the art is pretty awesome in this one. Yeah, I like this series a lot. Uh, I haven't gotten anything else by Jinsei Katatoka, who is the artist for this, but um, yeah, I, I think I'd like to. There's a couple other series that are kind of smaller, like I think Livingstone is only four volumes, so that might be something I'll get someday. And then I have volume one of Saint or Saint Seiya Saint Tia show, I think is how you pronounce that. Anyway, um, I'm really excited for this series. There's only one volume out so far, but it's a sequel to Knights of the Zodiac. So super excited to read more of that. I hope that they can do the original series justice. 
Then I have Saint Lunatic Volumes 1 and 2, which is a complete series. This was just a super cute um, manga that I really enjoyed reading back when I first started collecting manga, so yeah. It's like a silly cute romance story, so I like it. Um, then I have Volumes 1 to 8 of Devil Survivor. This is kind of similar to Dot Hack, where um, like real life and video games kind of get mixed up together and I thought it was a pretty interesting read. I enjoyed that series. Uh, it's a complete series, volumes one to eight. Don't know if I said that yet. Then I have volumes one and two of Kiss Me at the Stroke of Midnight. This is another romance series. Um, it's a lot more perverted than I thought it would be, so it's not at the top of my list of series to read. I do enjoy it, but I am like a couple volumes behind right now. And then I have volumes one to five of Komomo Confissory, which is a complete series. Um, this is a really cute one. I enjoyed it. It's about a rich girl that becomes poor and then has to start working, which is pretty comedic. So if you want a short romance series to start reading, this is a good one. And then on a totally different side of the spectrum, I have Berserk volumes one to six. Um, this one I am enjoying. I have watched the movies, which has gotten me interested in purchasing the manga. Even though it's ridiculously expensive, so I'm kind of slow to pick it up. But uh, I think Berserk is pretty well known, and so many people love it, so I will be picking those up slowly. And then I have my Nausicaa box set by Miyazaki, um, giant volumes. <laughs> I actually like the movie better. I feel like some of the details added in here were kind of drawn out and maybe a little unnecessary. Um, but yeah, it's kind of something that is uh, that I'm happy to have in my collection. It's kind of like something I can brag about if that makes any sense because it's just such amazing quality and pretty awesome. Yeah. And then squished in the corner here, I have volumes one to three of Everyone is Getting Married. And then four to seven down here. I like this series. It's an awesome Jose series uh, about a romance between a guy and a girl. The woman wants to get married, the guy doesn't. And uh, so it's a pretty interesting battle of wits. But uh, yeah, I like it. And then I have A Bride Story, uh, volumes one to four. This book has some amazing art and I love that it's in um, a hardcover format. So these are some pretty amazing volumes. Yeah, I've been slow to pick this up because it's hardcover, it's expensive, but it's something that I really enjoy. Uh, then volumes one to four of Girl From The Other Side, which is up to date. Um, this is a really awesome story that I also enjoy. Uh, yeah, it's about a cute little girl that's living in a world full of demons, basically, um, that are cursed humans. And she is, yeah, she's just chilling with some demons and it's pretty cool. Uh, then I have the complete series of Bakuman, which is by the duo Sugumi Oba and Takeshi Obata. I have read this whole series. It is awesome. Um, it is such an amazing um, example of like conflict without there being conflict, if that makes any sense. Like every uh, character in the book is kind of competing with each other, but at the same time they're all cheering each other on and it's just such a feel-good series. I really enjoyed reading it. And then not so feel-good is Death Note. I have the Black Editions, Volume 1 to 6, which is the complete collection. Everyone knows what Death Note is. It's a great series. I don't think I need to say more. And then I have some more by the amazing duo, which is Platinum End, Volumes 1 to 4. I think I'm up to date with this. Um, I know a lot of people are not enjoying the series and say that it's awful. As of right now, I've still found it pretty interesting to read, so I haven't stopped buying it. Um, I'm going to continue to buy it as long as I still think it's interesting. Yeah. And then I have volumes 1 to 4 of Raul Grad, which is by uh, Takeshi Obata, but um, yeah, not, not the duo. Anyway, I just thought that this was an interesting story. I love dragons, so I decided to purchase it. It was only four volumes, so yeah. 
Um, then I have Soul Eater Volumes 1 to 25. This is a really awesome series that I really enjoy. I love the art style and uh, someday I would love to pick up Fire Force because I liked this series. And then I have a cute little spin-off, Soul Eater Knot, um, which is pretty girly, which I was kind of surprised about. Uh, the mangaka creating something like this, but I really liked it, so I'm happy they did. And then A Silent Voice, Volumes 1 to 4, and down here, uh, 5 to 7. This is an amazing series. If you haven't heard about it yet, go read it because it's great. And then by the same mangaka, I have To Your Eternity, Volumes 1 to 3, which is very sad. Um, so be prepared if you read this one. It is good, but you need some Kleenex. And then I have the amazingness that is One Punch Man, volumes 1 to 13, which is up to date. Um, it's, it's just great. I don't think you need me to say more than that. And uh, then I have a one shot, which is called The God's Lie. It's probably the best one shot I have read so far. If you're looking for just a single manga volume, this is the one I would recommend. Then I have Neon Genesis Evangelion volumes 1 to 14 in omnibus format. Um, this was a good series up until the end. I don't think I understood the ending, like the whole last book of this series, but um, maybe it was just too philosophical for me. Um, it's, it's still a good series, I would still read it again, but uh, yeah, it's just the end gets kind of confusing. And then I have Blackbird, Volumes 1 to 16, and 17 and 18 down on this bottom shelf. So that's a complete series. Um, it's a cute romance. I really enjoy it. Uh, yeah, not much more to say about it. And then I have Blade of the Immortal, Omnibus 1, 2, and 3. I am not caught up with this, but I'm trying to keep ahead of uh, Dark Horse basically cancelling the releases. So. I have a couple more volumes to read to catch up. I haven't read volume 3 if you can see the bookmark there, but it is a really interesting story so I hope to continue buying it. And then I have volumes 1 and 2 of Magical Girl Apocalypse. This is another one I've started to be debate whether I want to keep in my collection. Um, there's just so many other stories that I'm purchasing at this time that I'm really enjoying. I'm not sure if this one's really... Um, one that I like enough to continue buying. And then I have a couple one-shots and uh, series by Makoto Shinkai. So I have The Garden of Words and She and Her Cat, which weren't my favorite. I think I'd probably check out the movie if you haven't seen these because the manga I found were kind of lacking. Um, and then I have Your Name, uh, volumes one and two, which I would recommend. This is an awesome manga series so far. I think there's only one more volume so I'm curious to see how they're going to end it. Um, hopefully that won't change my opinion of the series. And then I have five centimeters per second which I have not read yet but I've heard good things so hopefully I will enjoy this one. Uh, and then I have The Promised Neverland volumes one and two. I am only halfway through the second volume but this is a really interesting series that I like. Um, it almost reminds me of Death Note in a way. All of the uh, twisted logic and thought processes that are going into it. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting series. I would recommend that one. And then I have volumes 1 to 3 of Twin Star Exorcist. This was recommended by both, I think, um, Lotus and Aloof Dragons, although I think Aloof has recently stopped collecting it. Um, but I just finished volume 3 not that long ago and I think it's really interesting so I plan on continuing to buy it. Um, I just started purchasing this like a couple months ago so that's why I don't have that many volumes but I do enjoy what I've read so far. And then I have volumes 1 to 23 of Kame Sama Kiss which is a cute romance series and it's continued on the next shelf, our last shelf, so I'm going to cut away and we'll keep going on that one. Okay, so here is the very last shelf. It's not quite full, but pretty darn close. 
So on the top part here, we have the last two volumes of Kimmy Sima Kiss, and then for volume 25, I got the limited edition, as you can see there. So it came with this little um, art book that also has a bonus chapter in it, and I was pretty darn happy about that. So yeah, it's a cute romance series, like I said before, that I really enjoyed reading. And then I have volumes 1 to 3 of Claylord, which is a really cute series. Um, that's all there is to it, is just the three volumes, so if you're interested, it's not that expensive to pick up. I've heard a few people say that they didn't enjoy it. Um, it's not all that serious, so if you're going into it looking for like a really involved, in-depth story, then you're probably going to be a little disappointed. That might be why they didn't like it. Um, but I enjoyed it. It's light and fluffy, but also kind of depressing. It's an interesting combo, but yeah, I liked it. Um, then I have Akamega Kill Zero, volumes 1 to 5. This is a pretty interesting story. I haven't read Akamega Kill, but I think it's probably kind of similar. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. Maybe once this finishes, I'll start getting into Akamega Kill. Then I have Dreaming Sun, volume 1 to 5. Um, these spines are beautiful. The story started out amazing and then got kind of annoying. So it's not my top story right now. I do enjoy it um, and I will continue to pick it up, but I'm starting to get a little skeptical. And then I have Orange, the Complete Collection, Volumes 1 and 2, and the sequel of Orange Future. I loved Orange. Um, Future has like a bunch of, I want to say it's spin-offs, but like kind of shorts, and it kind of skips around on um, Suwa's story. So if you feel like you want more from the Orange universe, you could buy the Future volume. Yeah. And then I have Green Leers, Grand Leers, I still don't know how to say this, um, Volumes 1 and 2, which is up to date. It is a really interesting story about um, a world where seeds have power, and so their growth and sale has been heavily restricted by the government, um, which is really interesting. I like the concept, so I'm really enjoying reading this so far. And then I have Fruits Basket, Volumes 1 to 10 and 11 to 23 in the single editions. I've had to buy a couple of these used, as you can see. I have one with a sticker there, which I really don't enjoy, but the series itself is amazing. I would highly recommend it to anyone that uh, loves. Um, it's not really a slice of life because there is some magic in there, but it's pretty darn close. It explores like love and friendship and uh, relationships and how caring for people can make all of the difference and it's just like a sweet uh, story that has some sad moments and some happy moments and it's it's just fantastic. I don't know if I'm selling it very well but it's great. Uh, then I have Subasa, Those with Wings, which is by the same creator as Fruits Basket, but I just haven't gotten around to reading it yet, if you can see the bookmark up there. Um, because it's Tokyo Pop, I kind of am hesitant to read it because I don't want to get into it and love it and either have it not be finished or um, I know it won't be easy to find. So yeah, that's why I haven't read that one yet. Then I have The Water Dragon's Bride, Volumes 1-4, to 4, which is up to date. This is probably one of my favorite romance series at this point in time. It is um, really awesome. I love the character development and the characters that they've created. So yeah, I would highly recommend this one if you like romance series. Then I have Made in Abyss, Volume 1, which is all that's out right now. Um, it's a pretty interesting story about a world where like this giant crater has been developed and uh, yeah I think it would make an awesome video game. Same with this next series which is Children of the Whales which is volumes, I have volumes 1 to 3 and that's up to date. I really enjoy Children of the Whales. This is probably one of my favorite series that is out so far. I have done a series spotlight for this. I'll put a link up in the uh, corner there for you if you're interested in checking that out. It's an awesome series. I would highly recommend it. And then I have Zero's Familiar, 
um, Omnibus 1, 2, and 3, which covers volumes 1 to 7, as you can see there. This is kind of a cute romance series. Um, it's pretty lighthearted, but it's it's an interesting read. I enjoyed it. And then I have the sequel, which is volumes 1 to 4 of Zero's Familiar Chevalier. Then I have The Ancient August Bride, volumes 1 and 2. And continuing down here, I have 3 to 8. And in between 6 and 7, I have a little um, bonus side story that came with volume 6. I love this series. It's a really cute uh, fantasy romance series. So yeah, it's pretty awesome. Then I have Barakamon Volumes 1 to 9, which is very similar to Yotsuba, except it has a bit more of an overarching storyline, which means that I like it even more. Um, unfortunately, the volumes are very expensive. I think they're like $18 a pop, but I am slowly picking it up because I really love it. And then I have Planet Planets. Planetes, however you say that, by Makoto Yukimura. Um, pretty awesome series. This is all there is to it is these two giant volumes. Um, I think Dark Horse is canceling this print, so if you're interested in it, you might want to pick it up sooner rather than later. And then my favorite thing by Makoto Yukimura, of course, is Vinland Saga. I have volumes one to six here and seven to nine here, which is all that is out. Um, Vinland Saga is amazing. It is definitely one of my top manga in my whole collection. I love it. So yeah, if you haven't seen it, then you really, really, really should. Um, they're even coming out with an anime. So maybe give that a chance if you're really against manga, which if you are, why are you watching this video? Anyway, <laughs> read it. It's awesome. Support it. Yeah. Uh, then I have a couple anime movies. Um, I really don't have much of an anime collection, so I'll just throw them in here to show them off. I have Nausicaa, Spirit Away, and My Neighbor Totoro. Um, all Ghibli films because I love Ghibli movies. I have seen way more than this, but I just haven't gotten around to purchasing them. So, yeah. And then I have an art book for Pita 10 um, because I absolutely love the mangaka's artwork. Um, and I did have to buy it used because this is way out of print. So it's a little scuffed, but it's still not too bad. Um, and then I have a concept book for Princess Mononoke that one of my friends got me for my one of my birthdays. Um, it's really interesting to read it. It's uh, nothing like the actual Princess Mononoke story. So I really enjoyed that. And then I have two Zelda books. Um, I have, it's kind of hard to see because it's dark, the Hyrule Historia, which was a birthday present again. And then this was also, I believe, a birthday present for a different birthday. I have the, um, Arts and Artifacts book, and when the third one comes out, I will be purchasing that as well. So I forgot to mention, I also have a four pack of Pokemon Legends that completes my very scarce um, anime collection. Uh, but yeah, that's my entire manga collection. I'll just do another quick overview of everything. There's shelf number one, and then a chair with a cat and then shelf number two and my little small shelf over here so hopefully you enjoyed watching this video um please like and subscribe if you did and i always love reading and responding to comments so please feel free to do that too and my next video i think will be of all of my nerd stuff i usually have quite a few little things scattered on my bookshelves so I'm going to show those off and I also have some stuff on my walls. So look forward to that in about a week or two. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching. Bye!